Dear students, we are on the chapter data handling and we are discussing the exercise number one, which is related to reading the bar graph. As you all know that yesterday I have explained you that how to plot the graph, double bar graph and single bar graph. Both we have understood with the help of a video. Now we are discussing first two questions related to exercise 3.3 which is based on reading the bar graph. So I'm sure you all have book in front of you. Question number one is telling, use the bar graph, which is shown in figure number 3.3. .3. If you will see your NCRT book, there are two figures drawn, beta. One is figure 3.3, .3, one is figure 3.4. So you have to see the figure which is on left. And then you have to answer the following question. The first one is telling here, which is the po most popular pet. If you will see the bar graph, you will find that one side you have all the pets written on x-axis and on y-axis you have the number of students written and it is showing the pets owned by students of class 7. Okay? Now you have to see that which bar is the longest bar. Can you please tell me which pet is the most popular pet? in the question yes absolutely correct the answer is cat if you will see that the bar of cat is the longest one it means the most popular cat is most popular pet is cat move on to the second question how many students have dog as a pet now read the bars ki aapka jo dog wala bar hai wo kahan par ja kar mil raha hai yes absolutely right there are eight students who are having the dog as pet. Move on to question number. Oh, sorry. We don't have any question now. Now, may I know from you all that I am adding one question by my end. Can you please tell me what is the range of students who are having the pets? Tell me faster. What is the range of pets? range of students who are having the number of pets okay very good very good let me see who are right who are wrong okay now range may what we do beta we take out highest minus lowest okay highest minus lowest generally in the bar graph it also asks what is the range of it so, if you check the bar graph, mein check karoge, you will find that cat is the most value and cat ki value is 10. Hai? Lowest value, if you go to the lowest value, the data is rabbits ka, and the value is given 2. Hai? 10 and 2. So, if you will subtract this, answer will come 8. So, the range of students who are having the pets will be the answer as 8. It means I am finding that there are many of the students in your class who are unaware about range. It means they are not even watching the recording. No matter they watch recording or not, but they don't even bother about what we studied in the first class, second class, third class, fourth class, fifth class. It means we have already studied this chapter from uh, fifth, five periods, and you have not even seen that I have taught range in Beginning one period, second period, and third period. Lagatar teen din tak padayam logo ne. If you are not knowing, I am sorry. You have to revisit the chapter once again. This is the most important question related to range. Remember, always range comes. Okay, remember always. Always range comes to find out. Let us move on to the second question, which is figure number 3.4. Now the question is telling, if, if first you let us see that what is given in the data here. It is telling read the bar graph 3.4, which shows the number of books sold by a bookstore during five consecutive years. And you have to read the bar graph and answer the following question. Now let's move on to the first question. It's telling about how many books were sold in 1989, 1990, and 1992. 
now first you see the bar graph one side on the x axis you will find all the years are given another side if you will find the number of books are given in the form of y axis now may i know from you all tell me number of books sold in 1989 1990 and 1992 tell me faster what will be the answer okay very good absolutely correct सबसे पहले गौर से देखो बेटा वन यूनिट इज गिवेन हंड्रेड बुक्स और अगर आप 1989 में देखोगे तो बीच से मतलब जो मिडिल वाला होता है वो होता तो फिफ्टी होता बट मिडिल वाले से भी ऊपर है इसका मतलब हुआ दैट फोर हंड्रेड एंड सेवेंटी फाइव सॉरी वन हंड्रेड एंड सेवेंटी फाइव बुक्स आर सोल्ड इन योर नाइनटीन एटी नाइन ओके नाउ नाइनटीन नाइनटी If you will see 1990 again, you will find that you have some sort of the data in above 450. ठीक है 450 से ऊपर जा रहा है. So 450 से ऊपर जा रहा है. It means वो पक्का होगा 475. ठीक है. Because it's not touching 500 as well. Now move on to the next year that is 1992. So 1992 may I know from you all that what is 1992? Tell me faster. What is nineteen ninety two? Okay, very good. Very good. Two hundred and fifty. Okay. For this, I would request you all to do a favor. Just take a scale, and with the help of scale, just mark it in a proper way. If you think. That वो मिडिल में आ रहा है फॉर एग्जाम्पल इस तरीके से देखिए बार को सपोज यहाँ लिखा हुआ है टू हंड्रेड ठीक है यहाँ पे लिखा हुआ है थ्री हंड्रेड अगर मिडिल में आ रहा है तब तो आप टू फिफ्टी बोलोगे अगर मिडिल से नीचे है बेटा तब आप उसको टू ट्वेंटी फाइव मार्क करेंगे ठीक है तो पहले एक बार स्केल यूज कीजिए स्केल से मेजर करके देखिए कि कहाँ पर आ रहा है यस आई ऑल्सो एग्री विथ चिवानशो दैट इट इज टू हंड्रेड एंड ट्वेंटी फाइव Yes, so here it will be two hundred and twenty-five. Yes, it is going below two fifty, beta. Yes. Now move on to the next question. It is telling that in which year were about four hundred seventy-five books sold, and in which year two hundred and twenty-five books sold. now we have already answered i believe yes you can see 475 books were sold on 1990 theek okay? hai year 1990 and 225 225 1992 yes absolutely correct beta now move on to the next question in which year were Fewer than two hundred two fifty two hundred fifty books sold in which years? It is asking. As a con, say years and gin me two fifty se kam books kuch hi kam books sold hui hai. Okay. Do you really find we have only one year? Do you really find that we have only one year? Pakka se dekhi God se ek bar pura graph. क्या केवल एक ही साल है जिसमें 225 से नीचे 250 से नीचे की बुक सोल्ड हुई हैं, ओके यस एब्सोल्युटली देर आर टू इयर्स बेटा देखो गौर से देखो यहाँ पे दो ऐसे साल हैं, दो ऐसे ईयर हैं जिसमें 250 से नीचे की बुक सोल्ड हुई हैं, यस yes, सबसे पहला है आपका 1989, एटी नाइन यस एंड सेकेंड इज नाइनटीन दिस इज क्वेश्चन नंबर थ्री एंड यू विल फाइंड देखो 1989 है 175 बुक्स सोल्ड हुई है 1992 225 फाइव बुक्स सोल्ड हुई है मतलब दोनों कम हो गए ना 250 से सो अवर आंसर विल बी 1989 एंड 1992 रिमेंबर बेटा बुक में आपको क्वेश्चन दिया है इन विच इयर्स 
अगर बुक में क्वेश्चन होता है इन विच ईयर ओनली इट मीन्स यहाँ पर एक ही आंसर आता बट यहाँ पर लिखा है इन विच ईयर्स 250 से कुछ ही कम बुक सोल्ड हुई है ठीक है तो 250 से नीचे में बेटा दो आते हैं 125 भी आता है और 225 भी आता है ठीक है नाउ मूव ऑन टू द नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन द नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन सेज कैन यू एक्सप्लेन हाउ वुड यू एस्टिमेट द नंबर ऑफ बुक सोल्ड इन नाइनटीन Now this answer I want you all from your side. आपने कैसे एस्टिमेट किया कि इट इज वन ट्वेंटी फाइव टेल मी फास्टर क्वेश्चन नंबर फोर इट इज टेल मी फास्टर ओके स्केल से मेजर किया फाइन आपने एस्टिमेशन कैसे लगाया कि वो वन ट्वेंटी फाइव ही है थिंक ऑफ इट ओके वेरी गुड शिवानशु It is asking how you estimated that it is one seventy five. Let me tell you, beta. It will be like this that you have seen that the nineteen eighty nine was one hundred or two hundred ke beech me aara tha. Thik hai. Pehli cheez. Second cheez, you have seen that the part that you have seen, which is the bar, bar is crossing fifty. Ha na? Matlab crossing one fifty. You can simply call it. ठीक है बिकॉज 100 से 200 के बीच में तो आपने देखा कि 150 को क्रॉस कर रहा है और 200 से नीचे है सो दैट इज वाई यू हैव एस्टिमेटेड दैट इट इज 175 फॉर श्योर ओके यस एब्सोल्यूटली नमन सो रिमेंबर यू विल नॉट बी राइटिंग ओनली बाय स्केल यू हैव टू राइट इट डाउन आर स्केल शोज दैट वन यूनिट इज इक्वल टू हंड्रेड बुक्स एंड द बार वॉज क्रॉसिंग 150. So we estimated that it would be 175 for sure. Okay. So this should be the proper answer for it. I am sure you have got it now. So please take a look on this video, which will help you that how to draw the bar graph so that you can complete this exercise. Bar graph and double bar graph. Let's start with a bar graph. Let's understand this with an example. In bar graphs, the data is represented in the form of bars of uniform width, drawn horizontally or vertically, with equal spacing between them. Length of each bar is proportional to the data which it represents. Let's understand this with an example. Let's represent the following data using bar graph. To represent data graphically, first of all, we will draw a horizontal line and a vertical line as shown. Then, we write categories such as red, white, blue, grey, and purple on horizontal axis, and number of caps sold on vertical axis. Then, we will choose appropriate scale. That is, we will specify how many caps will be represented by a unit length of a bar. Here we will choose one unit is equal to ten caps. Accordingly, we will write the number of caps on the vertical axis. Now we will find the height of bars as per the data. Here twenty red caps were sold. To represent the number twenty, we can draw a bar extending from zero to twenty on vertical axis. It will be a bar of height two units. Similarly. For representing forty-five white caps, we draw a bar extending from zero to forty-five on vertical axis. Here, note that any two divisions have ten subdivisions, so forty-five will be represented by four point five units. This is how we can represent all the data on the bar graph. The advantage of bar graph is we can represent data much easily as well as in less time. By looking at bar graph, can you tell me the kind of caps sold the least? Here, the bar with the smallest height will be the answer. So, purple colored caps are sold the least. Can you tell me what is the difference between the number of red caps and blue caps sold from the shop? We can see that the height of bars 
differ by half unit. Since one unit represents 10 caps, so we can say that half unit represents 5 caps. Now let's understand more about double bar graph. Following table shows the number of ice creams sold by seller A and seller B on Sunday. To draw a double bar graph, observe the values. We can see that lowest value is 35 and highest value is 52. That means the spread of the data, that is the range is from 35 to 52. Choose a suitable scale. Here, if we use 1 unit is equal to 1 ice cream, then the bars will be very tall and we could not represent them on the paper. If we use a very large value, such as 1 unit is equal to 50, then it will be difficult to represent values like 35. So, an appropriate scale could be 1 unit is equal to 5 ice creams or 1 unit is equal to 10 ice creams as most of the value can be represented using this scale. Can we choose 13 here? Think about it. No, since given values are not multiple of 13 or they cannot be easily represented, therefore we cannot take 13 as the value of unit length. We will choose one unit length is equal to 10 ice creams. Now, here we have to draw two bars. So, we must differentiate them so that we can read them easily. To do so, we can write legends like this. We can draw bar like this to show the number of ice creams sold by seller A on Sunday and bar like this to show the number of ice creams sold by seller B on Sunday. Let's draw the double bar graph. First, draw vertical and horizontal axis. Show categories like strawberry, vanilla, chocolate, etc. on horizontal or vertical axis and show number of ice creams on other axis according to the scale taken. Here, since value less than 30 are not present, so we can skip those values and can start from 30 as well. To do so, we will draw a kink map which shows that the values from 0 to 30 are not taken. Seller A sold 40 strawberry ice creams, so we will draw bars of length 0 to 40. He sold 42 vanilla ice creams. Here, 42 is between 40 and 50. Since each unit represent 10 ice creams, therefore we can say that the 10th part of unit represents 1 ice cream. So, to represent 42, we have to consider 2 parts of unit length out of 10 parts after 40. Thus, we will draw a bar extending from 0 to 42. In the same way, we will finish drawing a double bar graph of the given data. Note that we have used different kinds of bars to represent each seller. Let's understand some of the advantages of double bar graphs. As you can see, we can easily compare the scale of ice creams by two seller on the same graph, for example, seller A sold 40 strawberry ice creams while seller B sold 35 ice creams, that is, 5 ice creams less than seller A. Highest number of ice creams sold by seller A is 52, which is mango ice creams, while highest number of ice creams sold by seller B is 50, which is vanilla ice creams. Now, Try to find the answers of following questions.